pretty soon you're not even going to remember who that guy is. Hey guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD vlog. This is vlog number 191, and today we have a very special guest on the vlog, Dr. Rachel Cook. You guys probably all know her already. She is a rising star in the audiology influencer realm, uh, and I don't even really know if we can say that anymore because you've been creating content now for what, uh, over a year? Just about a year. That's yeah. awesome, that's yeah. awesome. And honestly, the community of influencers is very small uh -huh. inside of the world of audiology, but I wanted you to come on the vlog today because I wanted to talk about your experience with getting into content creation. Um, everyone already knows my story, but I really wanted to bring other individuals on this journey with me because there's just so much information to cover in the topic of audiology and not everybody likes the way that I present the information. <laughs> not everybody likes me, don't tell my mother that, but um, it, it's true and, and I really, once we first met um, we were actually looking for an audiologist in the clinic, and then we had our initial call with you, and I'm like, holy crap, your personality would be perfect on camera. And uh, oh it's gosh. just the energy that you have. You have to have high energy for it to come across well on camera, but take me into, or take us all into your world with content creation and what your experience was with it. Well, knowing originally when I had first interviewed with you, um, it was for just a clinic position and it, that's exactly what it was advertised as. Obviously I knew who you were, I knew um, you know about the office and I wasn't thinking that I would ever be asked to do any content truthfully. I just thought that I would get to watch and learn and maybe some point like five years down the road you'd be like, okay, are you interested? I was open to the idea, but I didn't think it was gonna happen straight away. And then within the first few weeks of working there, you're like, let's get you on videos. And I was like, whoa, okay. So I kind of, I, I don't know, it kind of like flipped my world upside down a little bit because I, I knew how to do most of the audiology things, relatively new audiologist, but content creation is a completely different thing, top to bottom. It's like learning a whole new set of skills. So. What I was focused on originally was just trying to put out content that I thought would be helpful, useful. We had kind of partnered on some topic ideas and things like that. And what's been really fun is now through the progression of this that I have started to take things and twist them and spin them a little bit because I am really interested in tinnitus. I'm also really interested in pop culture and how can we take pop culture uh, moments and rope them back into the audiology space. So it's been fun to kind of settle into content creation, but I definitely did not go into this thinking that I'd be doing any sort of content creation. Yeah, in the earlier aspects of it, like I, I had had my system in place for how I do video content creation for uh, years at that point, because yeah. um, I had started in 2017 and we brought you on, was it 2022, right? Mm -hmm. Early, yeah. or no, sorry, my birthday. June uh, of 2022. June yeah. 27th of 2022 is when we brought you on. So we're about a year and three, year and four months yeah. that you've been on staff. And so I had had, what, five years of content creation experience and I had never actually trained anyone in content creation before and so I really had no idea how to go about it so I'm just you know what I'm just gonna tell you exactly what I do and then kind of you know throw you into the deep end of the pool and see yeah. if you you sunk or, or swum and, and I think that the moment that I knew that it was going to work out is literally the first video you did um, I I know it took you like five hours to record your oh first five-minute video Oh my gosh. I think I was near tears by the end of it because I was like, how does this man do this every week? This is so hard. You know, but it was the energy that you had when you were presenting the information. I'm like, if you have the energy down, you can learn everything else, yeah. right? Yeah. And you can, and through trial and error and practice, like you can just get better at it. Yeah. And then you notice that the amount of time that you have to put into a video gets less and less and less as time goes on and the quality goes up and up and right. up. Right, right, yeah. And so now you're at a point, um, you've noticed over the course of the last year that I've become less and less hands-on as time goes right. on. Um, initially it was, I was doing a, a ton of the conceptualization of the videos. I was doing a lot of you know different scripting aspects, taking what you have done and just completely redoing all of it. I don't know how many times I'd go to a script and it would be just red marks all the way down and I'd be like, okay, all right, I got a reframe. But I didn't know you present content in such a way that's very structured. And so there's a, an entire 
kind of layout for how to do these things. And I was just hoping I'd find the layout somewhere, but then with your help, you'd be like, oh no, the content that you have is great. We've just got to move this around. And, and yeah, it was always a fun experience. I'd be like, okay, gonna go open those edits now. Let's see. <laughs> but over time, you're exactly right. It's gotten to the point where the other day I asked you, I said, there's no edits on that one. And you said, yeah, there's no edits. And I went, what? Yeah. There's no edits. Yeah. So that's, I'm like, we're getting somewhere. That's how things are supposed to work, right? You start off, things are a little on the rougher side when you first get going. Oh, it's yeah. a completely new skill. Yeah. There's really, there's only, like I said, a handful of other content creators in the audiology space mm -hmm. that you could go and look and see what they're doing uh, is an example. Yeah. Um, we were talking a little bit before this vlog about how I was inspired by Aaron Marino, who's a fashion blogger, yeah. for the initial conceptualization of the channel. Because um, I had no other audiology influencers to look at you said that right now and I was like a fashion designer is what got you here I was like you gotta walk me through this yeah because. so like so like men's fashion right yeah. and, and um, there's plenty of female fashion vloggers out yeah. there but there's like a very small handful of men's fashion vloggers and he had created a video saying like here's how I create content and I was just happening to watch his channel I'm like okay well that's how he does it so now I can steal that from him and just have an audiology spin on it, not a fashion spin on it. And so then I kind of create my own system and then I try to pass that system off to you. But we also don't want you to be exactly like me. We right. want you to have your own voice, uh, have your own uh, people that you, you speak to that, again, don't necessarily like the way that I present information, but like the way that you present information. Right. So, so talk us through like, what is your content creation process? Because everyone knows that I'm like a, you know, starting Friday night, I get on that content train and I'm doing it through the entire weekend. But like, what's, how do you go about content creation? Well, it kind of just depends. It ebbs and flows with what's really going on. So a lot of the content that I do try to create does come from personal experiences in the clinic, things that have happened that maybe I have questions about or concerns about, or just questions that keep getting asked to me. And I'm realizing, oh gosh, a lot of people have a lot of questions about this test that we're running or this brand of hearing aid or this feature. It keeps coming up again and again, it was repetitive. So I decide, okay, that's something that maybe I'd like to write content about. If I didn't have anything directly that happened in clinic that week that inspired a video idea, then my next move from there would really be, okay, what's happening in the news surrounding the hearing aid space? So hearingtracker.com is a fantastic resource for kind of all things hearing aids and the audiology industry. And kind of looking to see, okay, has anything new popped up? Any new treatments, any you know crazy new launches of new things and going through those. Um, and then just taking also things that are important to me, things that I wanted to research further. So I'm very interested in tinnitus and I'm also very uh, young in my career, if you will. So I still have a lot more to learn about tinnitus treatment, but learning all of the causes of tinnitus and finding out that it's this expansive topic and going, I could break down tinnitus for each one of my videos for the next 10 years and probably still have another 10 years of content to go on that. It's so, so true. And if I wanna know where my own tinnitus is coming from and how to better cope and manage with my own tinnitus, then what I learn should be written out and delivered in a way that other people could perhaps benefit from what I'm learning about my own experience. You know, I don't know if you feel the same way, but I feel like taking the time to do all the research around certain topics and to create the content in a way that you have to communicate it uh, to where it's understandable to yep. someone who's not in the profession, I feel like it makes me a better audiologist. It absolutely does because, first of all, once you say a line to a camera 10, 11, 12 times, I know our editor Amy has seen me stumble over a line again and again and again, and once you finally get it, you don't forget it. And so then I start being able to use these things in clinic when I'm explaining things and it goes from being this really long-winded explanation that's kind of jumping all over to the place to this really clear and concise explanation for exactly what I'm trying to target or pinpoint and it feels good. Yeah. When you just deliver it and you're like, oh, that sounds good. They understand it quickly and you realize all of that came from researching, practicing and, and filming 
this content. Yeah, you know, there's this concept of like 10,000 hours. You need 10,000 hours of doing something before yeah. you're an expert in it. And when you think about all the additional hours that you put into content creation, in addition to actually working as an audiologist in a clinic, um, it greatly accelerates your path to becoming a quote unquote expert in your area. The amount right? of research studies that I read through, because a lot of the topics that I'm looking at, I am trying to pull actual research studies that prove what I'm trying yep. to, to say. So I'm reading research articles every single week. I'm staying up to date on everything that's coming out always. So it really allows you to kind of continue to grow and develop as a professional. It's not just making videos, it's I have to get better to make these videos. That is so true, because you can't just like, regurgitate information that other pe other people have shared you have to oh. you have to go and look at the research come up with your your own interpretation of that and share your perspective of mm -hmm. that otherwise it just becomes like you type into chat gpt and you get this artificial intelligence stuff that's not novel uh, at all no. when you read it no. um, and you're like man like anyone could have written this um, and they provide no additional insight or context to the person who's actually reading it right. so um, but we are actually going to be doing a talk together hopefully we're actually submitting this yeah. um, because obviously the audience that we speak to is a consumer audience right. but what we would like to do is we would like to help other audiologists be able to create content as well because the one thing that we all know is a problem out there is that there's a lot of misinformation oh. about hearing loss tinnitus treatment options testing all of that and so uh, what we think would be a really good idea is to have more than just you and me and a couple yeah. other handful of audiologists talking about these concepts and having a lot of us talking about it and everyone's probably wondering like well why would you actually want other people to come Encourage into the space competition there's so many people out there with hearing loss oh my gosh that we need to have different people making different types of content that that um, that other people that consumers are interested in in order for us to really make a dent in what we're trying to do here yeah because we're very specialized in what we do so we're talking a lot about adult hearing loss treatment and hearing aids specifically but when we look at audiology even though the field itself is relatively small when we look at different niches within audiology it's expansive we have you know Dr. Um, Angela Alexander, and she's kind of spearing this charge for auditory processing disorder and the testing and the treatment recommendations for that. We've got uh, so many pediatric providers that could be putting out this type of content to help steer children and their parents through that type of a process. We've got even balanced testing and balanced treatment, and that's something that we don't touch on very often because we can't deliver that type of diagnostic testing and, and treatment in our clinic but there's providers that can. So I don't think that it increasing competition hurts us in any way, shape or form. There are these incredible aspects of audiology that more people want to know about that we just aren't necessarily the leading experts on at the moment. There are other people who have their stories and, and they need to get out there too. Yeah, and so this talk that we're gonna be giving, hopefully at AAA if it gets accepted, is this concept uh, or like of how we do content creation and really kind of share the, the stuff that has taken us years to figure out and just uh, shorten that learning curve for yeah. anyone who wants to get into content I never, creation. I never could have done it if you were not kind of walking me through that process. I certainly could have, but I think that the learning sort of taken curve, a long time. And it's very, yeah. um, you know, you're working with professionals who have a quote unquote, you know, day job, full time job. They are clinicians, they are healthcare providers. Um, no one starts out in content and then becomes a provider along the way. You're, you're a provider first and you're doing content second. So it's easy to lose momentum and it's easy to lose consistency to the more immediate clinical demands. But if more people just have a little bit more information and a little bit more structure to get started, they would do great with it. Yeah, just like remove the barriers for yeah. them. And I think that was the biggest thing that we were able to do is just remove the barriers to content creation. Show you how it's done, provide the equipment, have a dedicated space that you can record content mm -hmm. in. Like if you do all of that stuff and you remove all the barriers, creating content becomes much easier. Yeah, um, and, and it I, starts to get fun. And it starts to get fun, right? To get fun. Um, and then you start getting you know negative comments on YouTube and that just charges you even more to make more content because who doesn't love a good negative comment? 
comments oh, about I'm the- I'm like, obviously I didn't explain this well enough, which means another video on this topic. <laughs> that's I'm right. like, perfect, I got my video for next week. That's you right, know? that's right. So, um, but I think it's been a fun journey so far. Yeah. Obviously we have a lot more content to do. We literally just got done recording another podcast yeah. um, that was, uh, I think you guys are gonna like the new podcast show, The Dr. Cliff Show. It's a completely different format. Uh, we haven't really released at this moment in time a lot of these publicly, but we've probably recorded, what, five or six of them so far yeah. that are, I, in my opinion, really good episodes. Yeah. Uh, so keep an eye out for those. Also, if you want to see more of Dr. Rachel, if this is the first time you're seeing Dr. Cook, um, you need to go onto the Dr. Cliff AUD YouTube channel and run a search for Dr. Rachel Cook because then her videos will come up. Again, she's talking about a lot of uh, stuff that's similar, but also different topics as well. Um, and of course, if you're into The Bachelor, I guess, <laughs> like like you're not gonna get that type of content from me about The Bachelor and, Par what is it? The Golden Bachelor? The Golden Bachelor, of course. Yeah, The Golden Bachelor with his hearing aids, yes. right? You'll get that type of content from her, not from me. Uh, but thank you so much for joining me on the thank vlog you. today. I'm sure everyone's gonna go and check you out more on the channel here really soon. Guys, if you like today's episode. If you want to see more of Dr. Cook on the Dr. Cliff AUD vlog, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And uh, as always, we'll see you next week.